Good morning, everybody. You know, welcome to Smart Talk for Women. If this is your first time here, you're definitely going to enjoy it. But without further ado, I'm, I'm going to um, read what I read last month because I really liked it. And I just like to watch Nancy's expressions when I read things about her. So what do these words have in common? Passionate, coach, intention, enthusiasm, leader, performance-based, focused, and strategic. And what do they all describe? They all describe our facilitator, Nancy Profit. So for over two decades, Nancy has been helping organizations develop high impact leaders, promote employee enthusiasm, <laughs> improve corporate culture and drive best practice results. So this is a lucky bunch of women and I know most of you have been on this before, but um, take it away, Nancy. Well, thank you so much and welcome everybody. Allison, you're so wonderful. I'm telling you, I just need to carry you around with me at all times okay. to remind me. You're, <laughs> you're awesome. Thank you for those kind words. I certainly appreciate it. What a clever way to introduce somebody. I just wrote that down because I have to do some introductions next week. And that was, that was a great idea. Thank you. Oh, good. Oh, my pleasure. <clears throat> well, hi, everybody. How are we doing? I love this. Everybody's waving. I love <laughs> this. I love this. Look at all. Madly Trembly. I haven't seen you in ages and a half. Holy cow. I love seeing new names, new faces, and old friends. No, tenured friends, not old friends, but <laughs> tenured friends. That being said, welcome aboard, everybody, for Smart Talk for Women. Uh, <clears throat> we, this is a time where we spend an hour together just sharing ideas. My job as the facilitator is simply to uh, monitor and make sure everybody gets an opportunity to speak. And if I miss somebody, Allison jumps in and hollers. Um, there is a chat room. Um, Allison sort of monitors that chat room, but uh, we've got about 15, 18 people. I think we can probably do pretty good. Everybody's on one screen. If you want to holler out something, just raise your hand. Just be sure to unmute. But that being said, welcome aboard, and I hope everybody is kicked off. We're into February. I cannot believe we are almost done with uh, first quarter of February, and where are we? I mean, the first quarter of the year, March is a, a final one, and are you where you thought you'd be at this point? Anybody where you thought you ought to be at this point? Or are you just still continuing to tread, run as hard as you can, and hope for the best? Yeah, that's kind of where it is. Well, you know, you've often heard me say that hope's not a strategy. So as we think of it, we've got to, as business owners, as business managers, as people who are who influence others, pardon me, we have to have that ability to market ourselves, market our business, somehow through the marketing, develop some sales, and at the same time, be able to operate our businesses. Uh, often we don't have 125 people as staff behind us. At least I don't anymore. I never had that many to begin with. But uh, when, when we have small companies, small small operations, and our departments are such, we've got to do all three of those things, market, sell, and at the same time, make sure that everything runs smoothly. That's kind of opening up today for what we're going to talk about. So what I'd like to ask us to do, we're going to go around the room quickly so that everybody has an opportunity <clears throat> I'd like you to give your name, your company, and one word, one word that describes you as a marketer. I know, look, at, if, if I could show you the video I see right now of everybody's eyes going, what? <laughs> Karen, Jackson Miller, I'm telling you, you get the prize for the most stunned look of are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. So name, company, and you only get one word. Don't make me cut you off now. One <laughs> word that describes your marketing. It could be how you market. One word to describe you as a marketer. Cool. Everybody good? Buckle up, yeah. buckaroos. Here we go. We're going to start all the way at the other end. Donna, Addie, how in the world are you? I'm Let's wonderful. Go. How are you? I'm great. Perfect. Great. Uh, Donna, Addie, do I get to say where I'm from or no? Yeah, your, your, your name, company, and oh, one yeah. word for marketer. Okay. Donna, Addie, V at Lakeside Village, innovative. 
cool. All right. Thank you. Medina, welcome aboard. Did I say that right? You're on mute, Medina. If everybody could unmute right away so that we don't. Uh, hi, my name is Migena. I represent, uh, I work at Saks Fifth Avenue in Boca Raton. And I represent uh, one of the skin, like the top skin, the skincare, the best skincare leader in the world, which is La Prairie, the Switzerland skincare brand. Cool. Well, About welcome aboard. Thank What's you one very word much. that Thank describes you for marketing? Inviting me. Uh, <laughs> it's go and getter, innovator, leader. <laughs> well, that's three, but there you go. <laughs> Terrific. All right, Judy Elias. Hi, Judy Elias, Heroes to Heroes. At generally savvy at the moment, yikes. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about, whoops, somebody's moving around on my screen here. Christina, tell us your name, your company, and one word that describes you as a marketer. Christina Porter. And unmute everybody, please. There you go, Christina. We got, oh, you're, you're on mute. There you go. Christina Porter, can you hear us? We need you to unmute. Just hit your space bar. There you go. Hi, good morning. Can good you morning. Hear Name, company, and what word describes you as a marketer? Oh, uh, Christina Porter, Namaste uh, Resources, Inc. Um, I haven't done much marketing at all. I've, I've, it's referrals and a tiny little ad in the newspaper. But okay. I'm moving I'm moving there and I'm going to have to do some marketing. So. Well, today should be a good day for you. That's terrific. Thank you. How about yeah. uh, Karen Lawrence? We can't see you, but if you can unmute, we'd love to hear from you. <clears throat> You're on mute. She doesn't have a mic. She's using her phone. Karen, you can just talk through your phone. Oh, your phone is on mute as well. Your phone's on mute. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. If your phone number ends in 3953, your phone's on mute. Yeah, that's her. All right, Bridget Debrino. Hi guys, my name is Bridget. I work for Allenby Cosmetic Dermatology and Body Squad. I think the one word would be aggressive. Cool, thank you. Iris Sandberg. Hi everyone, no camera today. But I'm here to represent Tadasa, Florida Atlantic, and I'm the marketing chair for the region as well as National Hadassah. One word, outreach. Poo! Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Let's see. Let's continue across the... Danny? Is Did I say that correctly? I'm sure I did not. Hi, it's Danyani. Danyani, beautiful name. Yes, oh, thank you. Um, I work at Love Salon, uh, Love Beauty and Spa here in Boca, and we take care of the beauty. Uh, Self-esteem, we are here to help women uh, get a better looking and better um, self-esteem itself. Excellent. Thank Thank you for sharing. Helena. Hello. Name, Good company, morning. and one word describes marketing. Helena, founder of Vent and Brie. Um, one word, creative. Cool. Excellent. Pat O'Meara. <clears throat> Hospice by the Sea and Hospice of Palm Beach in Broward County, known now as Trust Bridge, but we still have the same two licenses. My word, persistent. <laughs> That's what it takes, doesn't it? Maureen Shea, welcome aboard again. It's been a while. Hi, I have missed being here and I'm sorry I'm late. I just got off a call. So Maureen Shea, right? Management CEO. And um, I guess marketing one word would be unforgettable. Whoa. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Cheryl, Cheryl. Boy, have I missed you. Oh my goodness. Allison. <laughs> 
I mean, all of you women, it's so good to see you. I miss sitting around that table, that long, mm. big table and having lunch together and salads together and talking and here we are. So I'm Cheryl Bialo with doTERRA Essential Oils. I am intentional on the year 2021. We're hoping and we are building immunity while we're building a community. And I am here sharing my love essential oils to keep all of us healthy and happy and move forward. Excellent, thank you. Uh, let's see, Miss Natalie Tremblay, talk Hi. to us. Hi, Nancy. So I'm Natalie and I'm a private wealth manager at UBS Financial Services. And my word would be focused. Oh, thank you for sharing. Hey, Roz, how are you? There I am. I'm good. And uh, I'm Roz, the, the queen bee here at Everything Logo, helping you be remembered. And so my word is connector. I'm a connector. Cool, excellent. Uh-oh, Jenna says, Jenna says, hold on a minute. Jenna, unmute. Hi, ladies. She just took my word. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, my name is Jenna Jacobs. I am the Outreach Coordinator for Progressive Behavioral Science. We offer in-home and in-clinic ABA ther therapy services to children with autism. And because I'm the Outreach Coordinator, my word was connector. Very good. Um, but yeah, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Love it. How about relationships? That's, a, that's another one. Perfect. Oh, my Thank you. <laughs> Ariane Rodriguez, your name, company, and a word. Describing your marketing. Sure. Um, Marianne Rodriguez. I'm a director at Roundtable Wealth Management here in Boca. And my word is relatable. Whoa, cool. Excellent. Karen Jackson Miller, you know, I waited a long time to call on you so that you could get primed up now. <laughs> Oh, good, good afternoon, ladies. I'm Karen Jackson Miller. I'm a commercial realtor with Kai's uh, Commercial Division, and my word is tenacious. There you go. Good. Rachel Allen. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Allen. I'm the founder of Strengths Coaching Associates, um, and my one word is social. Cool. Excellent. Let's see, Helena. No, we got Helena already, correct? Helena, did, did we talk? Yes. Uh, Thais, how are you? Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. Happy New Year. I, I missed the January uh, meeting. It's one of my favorite meetings ever. Good to see you, Allison. Again, I see some familiar faces. I've connected here. It's a lovely group. And uh, I'm a broker owner. I do residential real estate of Clear Ocean International Realty. That's my company. And a word, um, I was actually writing down the beginning of the, of the meeting and a Pat also stole mine, but that's okay. Persistency. I think that's yeah. really important. Very good. Thanks for sharing. Good to see you again. Good Jessica you. Gonzalez, how are you? Good, Nancy. Thank you. Um, Jessica Gonzalez, Director <laughs> of Marketing at the Seagate. And my one word would be aspirational. I'm going to tell you, uh, the Seagate, you just mentioned it. It always gives me goosebumps. It's one of my favorite places to stay and one of my favorite spas ever. We love it there. You guys do a great job. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Patricia, great to see you. Good to see you, Nancy. I'm Patricia Chimino, founder of Patricia Chimino Coaching. And my one word is inspiring. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Marilyn Wilson, it's been a while. How are you? I'm doing great, Nancy. It's so great to be on the call with everyone. I'm Marilyn Wilson, Office Executive for Legacy Bank of Florida here in Boca, West Palm, Delray, Pompano, and Fort Lauderdale. And my one word is resilient. Cool. Excellent. I think we have a couple more that I may have missed. Judith Elias, did we talk to you yet? I, I cannot remember because every square moved. I was doing it. Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah. Iris Sandberg, did we speak to you yet? Yeah, Iris? I, I believe you did. Uh, okay. Marianne. I know, I don't think we spoke to her yet. Who? Marianne Rodriguez. Marianne. No, did you we, did. We yeah, did. I thought so. Yeah. I'm, I'm All right. How about attention. this? Here's the easy way. Did we miss anybody? Raise your hand if we missed you. Golly, for all you people moving all over the squares, we kept up pretty well. Jiminy, Christmas, I've got to learn to bring in the participants list instead, Allison. You'd think I'd be smart enough by now, but 
no. That being said, again, good afternoon, everyone. And again, our topic today is really looking at sales, marketing sales, and operational challenges in 2022, I'm at 21, moving through to get to 2022, considering what we've been through in 2020. So I thought we'd just open up the conversation, uh, starting with uh, marketing, because is, and it's why I asked everyone to use a word so that you start to think about what is it that I'm doing in marketing that even aligns with the word I use that you shared with each other? And so as we talk a little bit about marketing, how is marketing, how do you see marketing reflecting or aligning? Nancy, I'll start. I used unforgettable because by the end of the year, I hope that our marketing is unforgettable and everybody remembers us. That's that? the, isn't that the way you want it to be? Un unforgettable. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. What else? Who else has some ideas? That's a great kickoff start. Thank you, Maureen. Um, Nancy. Hello, ladies. Um, this is Karen. One of the big issues is we can't, it, it's difficult to meet in person. Yes. So I'm trying to find out ways to get in front of people, get remembered, build relationships without them having to meet in person. Zoom is cool. Phone is cool. Um, you know, emails, all that stuff, but not, ha not, not being able to meet in person is a big obstacle. Mm -hmm. So share with us, what are you doing to market considering you don't have all the old tools that we had in the day. What are you doing now, Karen, to market yourself? Well, I mean, I am, I have a lot of snail mail that goes out to targeted groups okay. um, because I have certain market segments that I'm trying to work. Um, I do a lot on the phone, do a lot with email um, and networking like this. I tell you, the chamber has just been awesome as a vehicle to network. Excellent. So those are the things I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Who else has some ideas? Yeah, go ahead, Marilyn. I think we'll um, Jenna. Sure. I think now during this pandemic, we're seeing a lot more use on LinkedIn as a, as a way to connect with people and find people. You know, some people we haven't seen in a while. So it's a great tool to go through and reconnect with people you haven't seen in a while, but also to stay in connection with the people you see more often. And um, as an advertising, I think it's a quick way to just get a uh, flash news item up there for everyone to see and share. You bet. I think, you know, if we, uh, all, if you haven't had an opportunity to take a LinkedIn class, um, uh, I know I, Debbie Weems is somebody I've used and I use her with my clients to understand how to utilize. And I know we've got a couple of people in the chamber also that I know speak to, to LinkedIn. I can't remember who they are. But if you haven't had an opportunity to sit with a LinkedIn expert to learn how to use it for marketing, as Marilyn's talking about, how to join groups, how to uh, write articles or post articles, or at least share articles that continue to bring your, your presence to the forefront, LinkedIn has really taken over as the 2021-22 marketing tool. People are going there all the time. I have found it explosively unbelievably valuable as a marketing tool. Unbelievable. Thank you for sharing that idea. Jenna, I know you had your hand up. Yes, Nancy. I'm not sure if this was already said, um, but I find that Facebook groups have been really helpful. Parent groups specifically, um, where moms are sharing information and it's all referral and word of mouth from other moms. So when I post something about, you know, a therapy program or a social skills group, other parents are chiming in and just sharing their experiences. So we've gotten a lot, ton of referrals from Facebook groups. Wow. Isn't that interesting? I never, I wouldn't know a face, Facebook group if it hit me. I yeah, honestly so, don't know so anything about it. Nancy, you can actually search by location. So I'm actually searching like Miami, Broward, Boca, and there's actually specific groups that parents have actually created. So there's thousands of people in like a Miami, um, South Florida group. Anyone can join wow. and you go in there and you see all different types of posts from every type of business or family business, you name it. And people just want ideas and referrals. That's outstanding. Thank you for sharing that. That's my takeaway for the call today already. Awesome. <laughs> well done. Who else? What other things are you doing in this time? Yeah, Marianne. 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 
Marianne is good. <laughs> okay. So those of you who know me know that I, one of the programs at my firm is for female financial empowerment. And one of the things that I'm, my word was relatable. So one of the things I've been doing is actually viewing people, not for the purpose of selling, but rather for the purpose of understanding what information is relevant, what situations are relevant at this time. Because just like our business changed, the way people approach their finances and their wealth has changed as well inadvertently because of the pandemic. So just listening to them, interviewing them to find common thought topics that can help me produce relevant content, I think has been very good. So as I write blogs, I posted one yesterday, it was because of those topics I uncovered interviewing women. They might never be my clients, but I learned from them. They learned they learn my business so it's a marketing experience without actually pouncing pounding on the client and and trying to make a sale so i find that very interesting and going back to jenna facebook groups are really big we have our facebook group and i collaborate with other facebook groups and people actually look for information there because it has a sense of community again with a relatable word very cool. so that excellent has thank you for sharing Mariana, I think one of the key things you said at the beginning of your statement was, I'm doing marketing not for selling. And I think that's really understanding in marketing what's so important is marketing. I, 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 I will say this because I teach it in my sales class, but I'll just say it out loud and you all can smack me over the head if you want. Absolutely, marketing really, really, really isn't selling. It is not selling. It's building our brand. It's it's whatever you're going to, to your point, uh, Marianne, you shared that you use marketing as an educational tool. It might not even be something that you'll ever see that woman again or do business with her. But the fact is you have brought value to the community one way or another through a marketing tool of writing a blog. And, and so thank you for reminding us that marketing really, 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 does not have a thing to do with selling. It has the a thing to do with building a relationship. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. What other things are we doing? Let, let's, if not, if, let's see, Roz, I think I saw your hand. Well, I uh, Patricia. Yeah, I was just going to tag on to what Karen said about snail mail, though, that, uh, I mean, direct mail is an incredible way to reach out these days. And of course, if it's bulky mail, it's even more exciting to the to the recipient. They love receiving it. And then if it's got a promotional item in it with your name and contact information, it's very cost effective, long lasting advertising for you. And again, back to what you just said, Nancy, about building your brand, you know? Uh -huh. You know, it's interesting you say that. I got a, um, I, I, I got a, a, a EDI, a, 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 the a direct mail, and I got one that said from Firestone and it said tire sale, $189 for something, something tire. And I went like that, right in the garbage. I got another one about three days later from Tire Kingdom. Here's a plug for Tire Kingdom. Their direct mail piece said exactly what will you do? when your wife has a flat tire on I-95. And I thought, huh? It got my attention. They didn't sell me a damn thing. But, and then I thought, what will I do? And when she came home that night, I said, when was the last time you had your tires checked? And it became a conversation because somebody figured out the first person was trying to sell me a tire. The second person was marketing. One went Problem in the garbage. Solved. Yeah. And one got my attention that we even had a conversation. And I will tell you in the back of my head, should we need tires someday? Tire Kingdom's back there somewhere. <laughs> Just because the marketing was not selling. Thank you for pointing that out. That snail mail works well, as long as you do it the right way. The right way. Very cool. Very cool. I know, uh, Pat, Patricia, you had a comment? Uh, yeah, two things that I've been doing is uh, I utilize social media a lot. So I've been going live every week since last April with a specific topic every week and then giving strategies to thrive around that topic. So it's been a great platform, even though it's not in a group, it's just on my on my pages and in my social various platforms that I'm on. But people know that I'm coming live. I 
publicize it ahead of time so they can come to it or watch it in replay. And the second thing that I've been doing is uh, hosting master classes. Wow, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, the master classes have been fantastic. What a great idea. Can you describe for the folks what does a master class mean? Because I happen to be sitting on this side and I saw people go like that. So, so a master class, you can also think of it as a webinar right? But we title it Masterclass and it's teaching something to an audience that would want to know the information. So um, the Masterclass that I was running the last couple months was called Harness Your Highest Vision Strategies, Game Changing Strategies for 2021. And it was, I just went in and I shared three different concepts and it was fantastic. It was, it just was a great way for my audience to learn more, bring value to them and if they wanted to take it deeper, they can reach out to me for that. Awesome. Incredible yeah. idea. Thank you for sharing. Sure. I know Pat O'Meara. Yeah, see your hand, then we'll come to Thais. Well, our difficulty, of course, has been in getting into the skilled nursing facilities and assisted living facilities because many, well, everybody knows why I don't have to explain, but the activities directors in these facilities have been very frustrated because they don't know what to offer their people to help themselves out with their job titles and also to make things better for the people living there. So what we've been able to do is in some cases, finally get to somebody, a human being by phone, and then drop off a packet that not only has three pages worth of different topics that we could present by a webinar, out by the pool with social distancing, inside with social distancing, limiting to 10 perhaps people in one session, with different topics that are of interest to people. In addition to that, we have what we came up at, with as a whiteboard project. It's an erasable board. We drop it off free of charge, it's sealed. It has projects that are with it that people can do on the whiteboard and then they can erase it and try something else. Games they can play, cars they can try to remember what names existed in the 40s and 50s. So different things and the activities directors have looked at these and said, oh, this will help me out. So then we can drop these types of kits off, boxes I drop off in many cases free of charge along with the projects to go with it. And I deliver them to the facilities and then they take care of distributing them as they wish. So in other words, they remember us as providing them a service when they needed it most. What an outstanding idea. It's something they can use the, with, their, with their people that are living there. And at the same time, it just is constant drip marketing to remind them that when it's that time or when there's a need, that this is the first thing that'll come to mind for them. Well done. I love that idea. I know somebody else had their hand up, but I mean, Thais, you had your hand up. Yes. Yes, thanks, Nancy. Um, yeah, when uh, a lot of my marketing, when I mentioned that my, about my word persistency is just... Uh, constantly being in touch with my past clients and uh, reaching out with the, uh, constantly like reaching out when there's a one year anniversary on, on their sale, um, their birthdays, trying to constantly be in touch with the, with my class, past clients that I had all of them I had a really good experience with and, and capturing, capturing uh, new clients what I've been doing now. A lot of people, as you've heard, they're, it's, they're coming from out of town. They're coming from Texas, California, Northeast. Um, so I get a lot of calls saying, oh, I'm exploring. I'm thinking I'm about, about moving to South Florida. And um, tell me a little bit about Boca. And what I ha I've been doing it is um, doing little videos of different areas in Boca and just uploading on some of my social media. And, um, and also I have YouTube to, uh, YouTube channel and I'm, I've been to the Red Reef, uh, Sugar Sand. I went another day to the Boca Mall. I'm just at, I'm trying to every couple of weeks to come up with new spots in Boca and just kind of referring that to my new clients that are coming in from out of town wanting to learn a little bit about Boca. So that's what Excellent. I Excellent. What a great idea with videos and YouTube. I mean, that is just, that's 2021. People are, are, they're on the video mode. They're on that video wagon. Excellent. Lily uh, Heilman, good afternoon. We see your hand up or do I see your hand up? Lily? I lost her that quickly. Call yes, she's, on, she's on mute. 
There you go. No, I might have hit something. I don't know. What? What are you doing? <laughs> it's great to see you. Hey. It's been a while. I wasn't I'm... sure if you were if you were on or not on, but it's great to see you. Yep. Oh, I think it's Martine. I see the hand. Okay, Martine. <laughs> wait, where are you? I'm I'm looking the squares. Martine, go ahead. Hi, I'm sorry I was cut off earlier, but I've noticed a lot of people using an, a new app called Clubhouse. Um, I haven't started myself, but I'm noticing people are promoting themselves through something called Clubhouse. I, it, I keep hearing about it. I don't know if anyone else is familiar with it. Yeah, I can tell you what it is. I was just on it today. It's, it's a platform where people can speak on any topic they want and they can have moder a panel of moderators and then the audience and you are just listening to the, the topic that they have presented. It's, it's pretty interesting. You can find something for everything. And there's from celebrities to people who are trying something for the first time. So it's, it's a pretty interesting app, app. Only works on iPhones at the moment. And I just see from Donna Addy, it says, uh, I don't know if it's a question or a statement that you have to be invited to get. Yeah, get I do. I have a few invites if anyone wants them, but um, you have to be invited first, right? Wow, isn't that interesting? Thank you guys for bringing that up. Excellent. Mark Siegel, uh, somebody brought up that Mark Siegel provides Clubhouse. What does that mean? Who, who put that up? Me, Siegel. Cheryl. So go to Facebook, look up Mark Siegel. He has lots of clubhouse going on uh, Tuesday mornings, uh, several days a week. He's a tremendous networker. It will really, you'll be really happy. And the conversations are specific that whatever he chooses and everybody talks about it. We break out into rooms and um, talk about your 30 second or your minute conversation or pitch, as so they call it. So you can network with other people. Wow. Interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Cheryl. I had no idea. I'll check that out. I never even heard of Clubhouse until today. Not that I live in a cave or anything, but that being said, <laughs> it feels like I never leave my office or this screen for 12 or 15 hours a day. So I basically live in a cave. So that's uh, that's where we are. What other things? Who else? Uh, I, I saw a hand go up, but I don't know whose it was because here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this. I'm saying this. And I don't know whether it's a hand up, you're scratching your head <laughs> or doing your hair. Not sure. That Hi, Nancy. Yeah, Jenna. I'll go again. Um, so I love 2021 and I love technology, but at the end of the day, in-person meetings are literally the way to go. Um, and my job is to connect with pediatric neurologists and clinical psych psychologists, and they're very busy. And most of the time you can't get them on the phone. So who do I have to get through? Their gatekeeper the office manager, the secretary. So I literally am building relationships with them by asking if I can just come by and bring them coffee. Can I come by and bring some information? I would love to learn more about you and what you do here at the office. And that has really helped me to kind of get just the name out there, introduce myself and then build the relationship from there. So that's kind of my strategy for doctors. Uh, you know, it, it's so interesting that I, I think what I heard was I call and ask permission mm -hmm. instead of just show up and throw up. Yes. You know, absolutely. it's a big difference. Then, mm -hmm. hey, would it be possible? I'd like to bring you some coffee and just to get to know each other. And I think uh, you've made a really outstanding point is that your best customers oftentimes are those gatekeepers. Yeah. 100%. They have more influence over the decision maker than anybody else in the company because <laughs> they decide who gets to the decision maker. So well played. Well done. Thanks for sharing yeah. that tip. Absolutely. What is anybody doing differently? Now that we're in 2021, we see light at the end of the tunnel. And we hope it's not a train, but we do see light at the end of the tunnel. What are things do you think you will never go back to doing, whether it be marketing, whether it be your sales process? And if you don't have one, we can talk about that on a call too, because I think a sales process is important. But also, what are you doing operationally? What is it that you think you'll not go back to doing now that we're in, even when we have an opportunity to go face-to-face? -face? Anybody marketing or operationally that you're not going back to the old way of doing things? Anybody have any ideas? Hi, this is Karen. Um, 
back in the day <laughs> before pandemic, I used to take two or three hours every day and I would find buildings because I'm a commercial real estate agent. I would find buildings with office condos or retail spaces and I would just go introduce myself, drop off something and leave. Well, I can't do that right now. Um, people don't want you to walk in the door without an invitation. So I don't know if I'll be going back to doing that or not, but that used to work for me quite well. Uh -huh. Showing up and canvassing an entire building or an entire uh, strip center. Interesting. Interesting. Rachel, I know you had your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, obviously from the accent, I'm not from around here. Um, but with COVID and the, the lockdown, what it's enabled me to do is to work with clients on a more global scale. So I've been, um, it, clients, potential clients have been much more receptive to um, Zoom-based coaching. Um, so I've actually been able to use my old network from the UK and you know they don't need to know where I'm based. That's excellent. That is excellent. It's interesting you say that because uh, I, I am one who was traveling two weeks out of every month. And I can assure you, as sure as I'm five foot two and stubby, that ain't happening again. <laughs> it's just, I'm not going back to that. I loved it. I love my clients in, per, in person around the country, but I, 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 if I'm going to do it, and I say this because it, we're, we're all in business, if I'm going to travel someplace, it will be at a much higher fee. There's going to, it's, it's not going to be at the same uh, basis point. I'll tell you that because yeah. the, what I realize is I'm able to be far more effective one-on-one -on -one, and to your point globally at this point and still run a great business with my five associates things are working well uh, to the point where we're busier than we've ever been and we haven't yet to get on an airplane although i do do i am going in april and may for one client to two of their locations it'll be my first trip in a year uh go the last time i saw them was january a year ago uh that'll be a first trip but i that's only because of the type of client and who they are and it's changed my mindset as to the value yeah. I can bring versus it, on an airplane for sure. Sorry, Nancy, I was just gonna say, I think it's all about balance because I love being in front of people. You know, when I'm facilitating a group session, I get so much energy from actually being in the room. Yes. And I did my first one just last month, uh, yeah. first time in a year. So I think for me, it's about balance. It's about creating those opportunities, but also remembering what it is that you love and why you started doing this. Gosh. And, and just getting that balance right. You are so right, Rachel. It is the balance because I, I think all of us feel the same way. We just get energized by other people, no matter what. We are humans. And so having that, but being able to balance that. Yes, Donna Addy, I see your hand up there at the golf course. You're on mute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other day, I went to my first meeting with the Chamber of uh, Successful Women in Business. And um, that was the first time I'd been out in, in 12 months. And as you said, it was so energizing. It was so fantastic to be in a room with humans other than my coworkers or the residents where I live, <laughs> where I work. So um, I really, really miss that. I mean, that's a little you know, off of what you're asking, but oh. I really miss that. And um, the bigger thing that I'm doing is primarily I do mostly public relations um, where before I would have events at our community and bring in either professional referral sources or um, prospects, that kind of thing. But mostly I do public relations stories where I'm, I mean, where I'm telling stories, um, you know, about our residents, which actually, I mean, I've done this job for 23 years. So quite frankly, I'm extremely happy to have something new to do. Otherwise for me, it's kind of phoning it in. So yeah. I find, so I find a lot of good things that came out of this past year. And if nothing else, my job has been kind of reinvented, which has been great. Excellent. And I applaud you for having the ability to adapt and be flexible and as, as a, the overused word pivot to the new world and, and make it work. Good for you. Anybody else? Natalie? Nancy, I wanted to ask you, you said you're now busier than ever. So share with us uh, maybe some tidbits of what you're doing. You know, I shifted um, a lot to doing workshops 
where I had been doing a lot of corporate training and a corporate development that turned into executive coaching. And I now, instead of finding a corporation to do that in front of, uh, I, I open it up to public um, um, workshops. And I, I uh, normally it's uh, industry specific. Mm -hmm. And so from that, the workshop, the two hour workshop then evolves into one-on-one uh, -on -one executive coaching or getting in with a corporate client to do teamwork itself, working with a, an executive team on developing strategic plans, or a lot of times, and most of you know, my background is leadership development. So uh, it be through the workshop. And, and I will tell you, people will bite into, and Pat Patricia knows this, they'll bite into anything that says how to better communicate. If people just flock to that, no matter how many times they've read the book, seen the book, whatever <laughs> that looks like. And so those type of workshop, I did one this morning for a group on uh, ha uh, having difficult conversations. And honest to goodness, it was the most interactive. I sat back. I felt like I didn't want to, tr you know, send them an invoice. That lasted about a half a second. But uh, that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was so invigorating for me because they, when you do a workshop, you kind of put it out and it becomes a very conversational piece on a topic. And that, so that's how I've done it. And that's how I've stayed busier than one arm paper hanger. It's, and it's great. It's just really terrific. I'm so blessed. I truly, truly am blessed. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of writing too. I know I heard some other people say blogging, writing, anything just as a marketing tool to let people know that I'm still alive and kicking, that I haven't succumbed to the whatever it is that we're succumbing to these days, whether it be the exhaustion from the pandemic the exhaustion of doing business a different way, the exhaustion of waiting and waiting and waiting for the light to turn on and it all go back to something that we thought was normal. But I'm glad that we, uh, this sounds terrible. I think this has just given us a, such a golden opportunity to look at ourselves as human beings and to look at our businesses as to the purpose of what we do and our personal purpose in life. It forced us to slow down and say, wait, wait, wait. At least it has for me and a lot of people I talk to. And as I look around this screen, I've heard so many of you, we've had conversations. Mm -hmm. it's a, I figured out who I was. Maureen. I can how you can help I, others, yeah. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I totally agree with you, but I feel like, uh, you know, as we begin to begin this year and speak with our clients, people are tired. Um, and I, I think somebody today said that it's hard to, you miss the face-to-face. -face and I think... Um, attendance on Zoom meetings or less. I don't know, Alice, you might be able to comment about that with the chamber. So I think it does force us to think about how to think outside the box and be more creative. And maybe that might be a good next topic, you know, creativity. How do we, how do we get better at being more creative? Um, because we are going to be here for a, probably another four or five months before we really have the herd immunity. And that's, being very optimistic, right? So we're still living in this hybrid world of being at home and trying to get outside, inside your bubbles. Yeah, great point, great point. Yes, Natalie. So <clears throat> Nancy, um, just, just to give a little bit of background for everyone there. So as a financial, uh, financial advisor at UBS, my clientele is a little bit specific. So I'm focused on the ultra high net worth clientele of UBS. And that clientele is very, very, very wealthy. And um, the, the big question is, how do you get to that niche market, right? Because for me to do a general ad does not work because then I attract people of different levels of wealth. And that's not what I'm asked to do at UBS. So my minimum account, for instance, is 2 million. And that is on the low side. So I have very, very large clients, large families. So since the pandemic, uh, it's been very challenging, but also I've seen a lot of opportunities because when the market goes down, clients come to us right? They need us. We're their life, lifeline. They're, we're their money, where the money is. So I've seen myself as a financial first responder, right, for all my clients. And it, during, last year was not so much of a marketing year, but more of a let's keep everybody at float. Let's 
calm everybody down and let's stay together, right? And when you go through a market downfall like this, people are nervous and they don't want to make changes, right? So they're not going to change financial advisor unless there's death in a family or there's a major event in their life, they're selling a business and suddenly they've got this new pool of money. But when you're going through hardship, people are not interested in moving and finding a new financial advisor. So 2020 was a challenging year, but we've seen opportunities because suddenly people realize, well, this is time to put money to work. So what should I do? So we had the extremes, people who wanted to stay in cash and people who want to be aggressive. So we had to find opportunities. Where do we find our new clients? Where do we find the, the, mm -hmm. the next account? And so it was challenging. And now we, we've had some really good successes in 2020 and now going 2021, this virtual is not going away. And people of wealth don't feel comfortable taking an ad and calling that number. Well, and I think you hit it. But I think you hit a really good point that you saw an opportunity. People used to do it this way. And because of the new world and because not only of the new world of virtual world, but because of the economy, you figured a way, I think back to what Maureen Shea was speaking about, which is you found a way to become creative in helping people. And you've even changed your marketing mantra from being a financial advisor into being a financial first aid Person, <laughs> a personal, uh, yeah, uh, uh, responder, first responder. And I think that's really very key to what Maureen Shea is talking about is that how do you look at yourself and reinvent yourself in a way that we become more creative? Because we don't know, uh, the world's going to, the world has changed and it's going to, it's going to stay changed. Now, whether we go back face to face or not, or however we do it, that's going to be a personal choice. But the fact is, I think we've all had an opportunity to realize, one, we can survive. Yeah. And two, we've got enough people and surrounding support systems to make it work. And three, if we dig deep enough, we've got that creative bone Maureen Shea's talking about. We yeah. just have to say, what do we want that creativity to look like? And so now Natalie's a first responder. Yeah. I'm a non-Delta across any flyer. On trusted advisors because yes, they're the people that will trust you. And, you know, that's how my business works. It's all about trust, not so much an ad or marketing because yep. they're not going to go to an ad or marketing. It's they're going to yep. ask the doctor. They're going to ask someone they trust. You know, if they need help with something. So I was going to say, think about your strategic, strategic partners. You know, people who reach the same clients that you do. You know, yeah. great point, Roz. That this is a great time to look at those strategic partners. There's a lot of us on this call where putting an ad out or doing a, a mass mailing wouldn't work, and 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 so there are a lot of industries that doesn't work in. But what a great marketing tool to find a strategic partner. Like an attorney, a you know, business attorney for a financial planner, you know, whoever reaches that same market. Yeah, that's a great, great, great tool to use. Good point. Good Thank point. That, and that's back to being creative. Look, right. I, you know, you may not have thought in the past to, to be a strategic partner or with someone to make business grow. I certainly didn't think I was going to be in the workshop business. It wasn't what I had planned to do. I've done 125 bajillion of them, but it wasn't something that I thought I could use as a marketing tool. It never dawned on me. I just used them as a revenue stream. And all of a sudden it's become a marketing tool that's opened a lot of doors. And so, and it's because I had to do that and get creative. As you said, Maureen, I had to get out of my mm -hmm. shell and think I can't get on Delta and go to somebody someplace. So I've got to find them a different way. So thank you for sharing that and reminding us. And I, I have written that down as a topic. I think that's a great yeah. topic to, to look at. Mm -hmm. Yes, Allison. Um, you know, talking about strategic partnerships, I think one thing that makes right now different is we rely on referrals. Um, every business relies on referrals. I know we're relying on that heavily at the chamber. Uh, mm -hmm. Fortunately for everybody on this call, you know, the chamber is still growing but I'm asking for referrals more and more because if people are enjoying the chamber 
or they're enjoying what you do, um, your product, your service, it's about asking for referrals. And I think that's really something I've, we've always asked, but I think it's got to be more now um, because everything is so relationship based, even more now. So that's my two cents. Yeah, point, that's a great Allison. point. Yes. Maureen, go ahead. No, I'm just agreeing. It's a great point to, you know, we forget to ask for referrals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yes, Jenna, as we look, I want to be cognizant of time. We've got about six or seven minutes left. Jenna. Yeah. I just want to piggyback off what Allison said. Um, we rely heavily on referrals as well. So I talk with families that are looking for services for their child with autism. And the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, how did you find out about us? How'd you hear about us? And when they tell me Dr. So-and-so or this family, I'm always getting a first and last name. And I'm right after that phone call, I'm calling that referral that referred them and, said, and introducing myself. Um, and that's how I build my relationships. I'm never cold calling. I'm always going off referrals or doctors or word of mouth. Excellent. And that's been really, really helpful. Excellent. Excellent. Something my business coach taught me years ago, speaking of referrals, every agreement that a client signs, it, the price of the agreement is the cost of the agreement. The investment on the agreement is X plus two strong personal introduction referrals. And by month three that we're working together, I say, and so have you given, considered anyone that you might, we might, you might refer me to. And then about six months in, I say, is there anybody that you have thought of to, to refer me to? They never, thank goodness, they never come up blank. But uh, to Allison's point, I have to ask for it and I make it part of the contract. And they always ask, well, what does that mean? And I have, I describe to them exactly what that means. That's not a warm referral, somebody that, you know, fogs a mirror. This is somebody that based on after three months of working together, do you think there's a possibility that there might be value for someone else? And it always morphs itself into something. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because it's not always a fit. That's for sure. People can't always tolerate me. So you never know. <laughs> I'm, I'm free to say that. <laughs> Any other ideas, comments on what you're going to shift, what you're going to continue to do, maybe not do any more operationally or from a marketing standpoint? Anybody else have any other ideas? Yes, Marilyn. Well, the interesting thing about this whole pandemic and all of us being able to switch gears and change the way we're used to doing things, I found this very interesting being in the banking business all my life that we're actually meeting people at their car window to take deposits or to have paper sign and or having them come to the door after we've already got everything set up. So I think we've discovered some really nice streamlining on getting things done. Uh, people kind of used to love coming to the bank and just sitting and talking for an hour and having a cup of coffee while we're busy typing up forms. But we've kind of like switched it around so that we gather everything before they get there and now they're finding, oh, gee, I don't have to sit at the bank for an hour. I can come. I can sign. I can drop off a check. You're going to come to my car window. I mean, who does curb service anymore? But we do. So it's going to be interesting after the time comes when we can let people back in to see if they're really going to want to come in. <laughs> Great it's... point. I never thought of my bank being A&W root beer. but I, I know. I want roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> For you people that are too young to know. That's it. right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else had their hand up. Cheryl, was that you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I started teaching a class on Zoom etiquette and uh, it was quite successful. Uh, 30 or 40 people were there when I was showing it and teaching it. And I did a lot of research on it since we're on Zoom all the time or whatever right. other platform you're on. There is a lot to know about Zoom etiquette. If you're looking for clients, you're looking to network, it is about not only the lighting, the what you're wearing, your yeah. jewelry, your makeup, your hair, all right. of it has to do with, as you're sharing and talking about your business, it has to do with it. So putting my name out there in chat, reach out to me if you wanna know more, or if you want me to teach it to your people or your group, your team, your business, Zoom etiquette, it's not going away. So, How long is the class? How long is the class? I can do it in 30 minutes. Hey, I could do it. In, yeah. Allison. Yes, ma'am. 
might we make that smart talk for women topic next week, next month? And Cheryl, would you be would you be willing to uh, educate us? I would be happy to educate you. <laughs> All right then, All right, Cheryl. Well, I'm in a networking group uh, with women, and that's a great topic uh, as well. The Women's Executive Club. So if you don't mind, I'll send your name in as a possible speaker. That's fine. I'm also part of that group, and that's fine. Also, Women okay. for Excellence. Excellent. All those women's groups. It helps if you connect with these women's groups, ladies, because yeah, it's more about trust relationships, building each other's business, supporting each other. You bet. You bet. Maureen, I saw your hand up and I think Great topic. So we have a couple of ladies here that help. Um, Cheryl, I think you're essential oils and one of our ladies has a spa. So that's another creative thought. Is there a way that we could market how to make our clients feel good? Is there something we could do through Zoom or by mail, just thinking out loud? So now it's time to take care of yourself. I'm right at it now. There. Excellent. Yeah, Thank co-branding. <laughs> Thank you. That would be a great way to go around that. Excellent. Excellent. Well, you all have shared some tremendous ideas today. I do have, I'll just tell you, I am a copious note taker. Because the reason really is because I have a memory of a gnat. But really, you have such powerful things to say. And I, I, I really I appreciate that you have opened up so, so well today and, and shared ideas. Those of you who are new or who didn't feel as comfortable um, uh, speaking up, I hope you can see this as an open forum conversation. Please feel free next time, a little more comfortable to jump in at any point. I do want to say as we wrap up, thank you again. Is there anything happening at the chamber that we need to know about, Allison? Absolutely. Tonight at five is our live after five. Um, it's our happy hour. So bring a drink and bring your sense of humor and you get to introduce yourself. You get to meet some really cool people um, and they're always fun. Chastity and I have been running those really since um, probably March. Uh, when we pivoted and that one is really fun. So I would definitely suggest that. And also if you are interested in going to a live event, we are doing our breakfast um, in March. It's gonna be pretty amazing. Um, Andrea Virgin, who's heading up the whole um, new arts innovation center in Boca um, or arts center, I guess she's gonna be speaking and our, um, like um, Donna mentioned, our successful women in business, we're doing that live as well. So there's don't forget the, on. The, the Women's Business Council this Friday. Women's Business Council is this Friday. Thanks, Roz, for mentioning that. So um, they're all great events, but please just look on our calendar and come tonight because the more the merrier. It really is fun, and you just need to go on the calendar and just sign up for Live After Five. So thanks, Nance. You betcha. Thank you, everyone. Have a great, great month. Great job today. Thanks for, thanks for all your input and fun. Talk to Thank you soon. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.